Hello adventurers and welcome back to the Legend of Kalamatera series. Uh, this episode is going to be the first in my settlements of Kalamatera series. Oh, so I'm still going oh, to put it in the same playlist, but this one is the start of me talking about the towns and cities of Kalamatera, or at least the ones at the moment that the party have actually been to. Um, so thus far the party have been to Terran and Brewstock and they're currently in Steelborough. Uh, I've got a few other ones written out at the moment. Uh, I've got Stormsend, Ventura, Vesta, and Goldenfield. So I've got write-ups for those done. But I want to wait until the party's actually been there because I don't want to start talking about the city before the party gets there. So, first of all, I'm going to do Terran. Uh, now, when I actually came up with Legend of Kalamatura, Terran was the first city that I actually created. It was the first settlement that I thought of. I don't know necessarily why, but it just has so happened to be. I created the settlement, then I created the world map, so this is the first place I came up with. And I kind of went in quite hard. <laughs> on my document here, I have my document that I refer to. There's three pages on Terran. Yeah, three. everything else is like half a page, quarter, it's a little snippets, but I put so much into Terran. There's a lot there, so... Bear with me when I go through this. Uh, hopefully it won't take too long, but hopefully this gives a bit more information for you guys and also for the party if they watch this. So, Terran, it's a large city on the eastern coast, a population around 75,000 people. Uh, it's the military capital of Mentura, built on top of steep, steep bluffs overlooking the Powder Sea, which is the sea between Mentura and the dynasty. It's called the Powder Sea. And um, initially, Terran wasn't the massive city. The, the massive cities don't start out as cities. Uh, Terran actually started out um, as a cas as a as a knight's keep. Uh, there was a keep that was built on the edge of the cliffs. Very defensible locations from the sea. There's no real way to get. There's, there's there were stairs and there's like a natural stair. It was a hewn stairs to get from the keep to the sea and from the land it was fairly well defended uh it's built on a height you can see for great distances so that was the that was the start of it and the city sort of grew out from there as this became you know oh well, this is people sort of kind of flocked to it and the and the, the knight became the knight became the lord became whatever uh his fame grew and the city grew along with it until it became Terran. And it wasn't the military capital at the time, but then during the purge, at some point, so at some point over 500 years, over 500 years before the current story, the, the city was sacked. It was invaded and sacked by, per, by scourge forces. Raised the city to the ground. Um, which isn't, well, when you're, so when your military capital is raised, that, that's not really good for morale. So the council undertook a massive construction project to rebuild the city. And what they decided to do was to basically build the entire city, to build the entire city out, but they also build it up. So, uh... What they what they did was they decided to raise the entire city to the level of the highest point the, where the keep the original keep was that was destroyed. Um, but that was the highest point of the city, so they decided to go. Well, that's the highest point. Where's the lowest point? The lowest point is here, and they just build it up. So the entire city now sits on a foundation of stone, that is. Between fifth, that is about a hundred. So the base of the walls are a hundred feet off the the ground. If you approach them, so you come out of the out of the great woods, come off the road, and suddenly you're a hundred feet below the base of the walls. You have to go up a hundred feet to get to the the doors, the gates rather. So that kind of makes it almost impossible for an army to attack. And then you have the walls on top of that, which are heavily defended. It's the council basically went, all right, hold my beer. <laughs> Built the fortress of all fortresses. Uh, when they did this, they 
they, they ended up demolishing. They had to, I think during the process, this they sort of demolished parts of the coastline and emptied out several quarries to get enough stone to do this. And obviously, during that, you need a lot of wood, and that led that lended itself to a clearance project, which has just raised forest around the city for 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 miles. So, which had the other effect that no army, no one, you can't get within a day's march of Terran without being spotted. So an army appears, you've got a day's notice, at the very least. Let's assume a scouting party doesn't see them before that. It's also what makes Terran quite defensible, apart from the height and the massive walls. Uh, if you're coming at it from the land, to get to these uh, gates, there are paths up the, the cliffs. They did build in, like, switchback paths. Uh, you can get... Car- there are some, There's a mixture of ones that are for foot traffic and ones for carts. Now, the cart ones are wide enough that you can actually get the cart turned and go up. It's difficult enough, but it's doable. Uh, those, But that's really only for the civilian population. I guess it's Taran is the military capital. And two of... There's the parts of the city... So the, and at one part of the city, where there's the city's split into a number of wards in a massive ring around the central keep, military stronghold. Uh, two of those wards are the auxiliary ward and the equine ward. So it's the military. So you have big pie. You have fourteen wedges with a number of wedges around. And two of them, sort of on one side. Here's the military bit, which leads into the actual proper legionary bit. Uh, those two parts of the city have a lift. It's called, they have a number of lifts installed. So the military can actually get up and down much easier and faster than up and down by foot. Uh, but that is reserved for military use only. Um, and then once you're in the city, uh, depending where, where you approach from, you'll enter one of any number of wards. Uh, within the wards, the roads, there's cart traffic within the city is restricted to number to a to a, a certain like large carts. Hand carts are fine, uh, but like horse drawn carts are restricted to a number of designated paths. Uh, this and then these cart paths are gated and patrolled. Oh, they're gated at least. Um, the idea being that if an enemy force was to invade, there are only certain paths that they can take their siege weaponry through, their heavy carts through. They have to, you know, yes, their feet, their 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 soldiers can go along the foot paths or the uh, the foot traffic only areas, um, but their carts and their siege weaponry must go along these other these other areas. And once you're in these wards and you're walking around, um. Not, there's no road that goes straight from the outer gate to the next place over. There are no straight roads. Everything is built... Excuse me. All the paths and roads have several 90 degree curves. So it, it makes it difficult for an army to sort of go, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn left. And maintain formation doing so. And also it would disrupt formation having to do these abrupt changes. And when disrupting formation, that makes an army easier to attack, either with ranged or with melee weapons. <laughs> and the paths also keep keep the it tries to keep anybody within sight of the inner walls or one of the watchtowers. Now the wards are split up, physically divided by walls. So you have the massive outer wall, and then the wards themselves. There's a wall between them. So you're like, wet, like, I, like I talked about, like segments of an orange, if you will, or pieces of a pie, whatever analogy you would rather, you, which analogy you would prefer. Uh, so in the ward, so if, so if an enemy force was to break into a ward, you can contain them in one ward because there are still walls around it. Uh, and the inner walls also mean that soldiers can get soldiers can get from the innermost ward, the steel ward. And battle doing stand to the outer walls, and that's the most direct route, so they can go straight out to the outer walls. It makes their life easier. Everybody else has to make do with the winding paths. 
as I said, they co they come along the inner and the outer walls or the inside of watchtowers. So you're always it's very difficult. There's very few blind. There are blind spots, but very few of them. And the idea being that if an enemy army was trying to get in and move around, you know they're going to get close to an inner wall or a watchtower or a wall or a watchtower. At which point, soldiers in the wall would just throw javelins, throw missiles, throw anything at them to harass them and slow them down and cause injuries. At least in my head, that's how it works. Uh, the inner walls... Yeah, I'm not going to get into too much more detail, but there's the inner walls and there's various other, like, you can't just bring a, a battering ramp up to the inner walls because they have ditches along the side of them. Uh, they're not just simple mud, they're actually stone channels that, that double as like, storm drains storm drains slash sewers so you can't just bring a seat you can't just bring a battering ramp up to one of the walls you need to well first of all bridge that gap and then get in but this is siege warfare uh I've talked about the walls the buildings quite dense the, a, lot, a lot of the wards are quite densely packed with residential buildings businesses that sort of a thing Watchtowers, the occasional barracks or law office. And depending on the ward, certain other significant structures, which I'll get into in a bit. Uh, I'll just skip ahead to the war. I think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get into the wards themselves here. And let me do a thing. Hang on. I found this. Where are we? There it is. I found this the other day I played around and it is quite fun uh, desktop bear with me until I pull up my map of Terran to give you guys an idea oh there we go there's all images there we go hey there we go okie dokie so here we go here's my so here's Terran so what I talked about, like woods and markers, but so like for example, this number fourteen, uh, this I believe is the equine ward. So along the top here, I, I'm using my mouse. I don't know if you can actually see the mouse, but along the top here, uh, you have, this would be the outer wall. So again, this is somewhere between here would be the great lift, it's kind of like here-ish. Somewhere between these two wards, there's a lift to get soldiers up and down. So along the top is the outer wall. And then there's these, and you can see these, what their pencil lines, uh, they were originally just to be separately segmented up the city into the wards, but I've since decided, no, none of these are walls. So you have the outer walls, the inner walls, and if you imagine the road sort of snaking along and switch back, switch back, switch back, switch back, switch back, switch back, and then it gets to the inner, this like inner like sort of gatehouse type structure. So that's that. Uh, I'm going to start off with... Well, I think I've got the. I think most of the wards are in order. I do have a little key that I drew on my map. So yeah, Powder Sea, Wet Gate, Docks down here, and all the various wards. Yeah, but I'm going to start in the middle and kind of middle, and then we'll go out and around. Don't remember which way I went, but uh, right at the heart of the city, you can see there's another inner castle structure keep type thing. So even if you get through the outer walls and the inner walls, you've got another wall and another wall, then you've actual keep. So there's a lot to get through. Uh, right here in the middle, this is Baradun's Stand. Uh, the site of the Great Keep, which is this structure right in the middle. And the Heroes Guild, which is this little small off to the top right hand corner here. Again, I'm using my mouse, I don't know if you can actually see that, but there it is. Uh, this is the site of the Great Keep, the Heroes Guild and where the commander of the entire legions, uh, Vimak Bloodfist, can be found when he's not on business in Mentura. Um, surrounding Baradun's stand, uh, this donut, if you will, so Baradun stands right in the heart of the city, and then around it you have the circular district called the Steel Ward. Uh, the Steel Ward is the home of the Manchurian Legions. This is where legionaries, when they're not out in the field or somewhere else, at another station, this is generally where a lot of them live. In fact, I'd say the Legions contribute to, to a significant number of the population of the town are within the Legions. 
So this is where the barracks are. This is where the training. This is where the train. This is the barrack. This is where you get the practice ranges, the sparring arenas. Uh, and in more recent days, in more recent years, a lot of the practice ranges, which are just archery ranges or javelin ranges, have been converted to rifle and pistol ranges because I have guns in Kalamatura because I want to. Screw you. Uh, so that's the Steel Ward. Over here, and the Steel Ward is also the site of the Adventurers Guild. You can see this little building on the bottom right corner of Baradun Stan. So Heroes Guild is within Baradun Stan. The Adventurers Guild is just outside of it. Uh, for me, the Adventurers Guild is kind of like for D and D, for using for like party levels from like levels five to fifteen, something like that. Um, you need to have a certain amount of renown to be become a member. But then once you reach a certain level, like 15 or whatever, then you become a part of the Heroes Guild. And the Heroes Guild, they're the really, really experienced, quite do-not-fuck-with-us adventurers. So, if you will... So if you will, uh, yeah, the Heroes Guild are kind of like the high-level parties that you could throw a Tarask at and they'd be fine. Uh, the, the Adventures Guild for parties that would, you know, heck, maybe a dragon or something like Yeah, that's the kind of, for D, for Dungeons & Dragons in my head, that's how it works. Uh, moving over here, we have Artur's Ward. Um, some of the wards are named after the various members of the Pantheon, so we have Art, we have Dune right in the middle of it all. Artur, Arakael, Faldir, Toromir, and Ketsia. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all six of them, yep. Double, I was just for a second. I'd forgotten that. Um, now, art, so the wards are kind of themed around the various gods. Kind of. But they're, they are, but they are. Well, they're, they're sort of slightly themed around the various gods. So Artur's ward, uh, Artur being the god of vengeance, crime, that kind of a thing. Uh, I'm just going to pull up my... Hold on, let me have my Pantheon notes here so I can give the gods a better description. Bear with me. This is the joys of just throwing these things out and not realizing you're actually going to need them. Oh god, where are we? Pantheon, there we go. That's the one that I use the least. Because you wrote it once. Ah, that's really good. So, Artur, yes, the god of chaos, crime, and vengeance. Good old Artur himself. Uh, this is his ward. Uh, let me just pull this up. There we go. So, Artur's Ward, it could be referred to as the seedy side of Terran. Uh, it's the one part of Terran where the legionary patrols are notably absent. That doesn't mean there are none. It means there are very few. They tend to stick to sort of patrolling the border between Artur's Ward and Baradun Stand and the outer wall. The ward itself is not patrolled by the legions. But that doesn't mean no one is patrolling it and no one's keeping an eye. Uh, it just means that someone else is looking after the ward. Not the legion, but somebody else is. Uh, da, 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 da. But despite this, there's not really... The crime in Terran is relatively low because it is the military capital. There's quite a lot of discipline and troops going around. But even though the legions are absent from Arthur's ward, the crime rate's not that much higher. Uh, whoever whoever looks after this ward clearly rules quite tightly. And this is where you would find the Vengeance Pits. Uh, there are sort of a form, there are my play on like a fighting pit. Or anybody who knows anything about mili or medieval history, this is where you get like uh, trial by combat, that kind of a thing. This is where people would come to settle things not outside... Kind of outside the settle things personally without involving the law. Like, it's a blood feud. This is the kind of thing where people will come to settle these things. And these things, like the vengeance pits, they're soaked with blood, for lack of a better term. They are quite bloody affairs. They're not very pleasant. They're not used very often, but they are used. The more civilized uh, the Terran has become, these vengeance pits have kind of faded. They're still there, they're still used occasionally, but they're used more for for religious festivals and like sort of fighting pits rather than I'm going rather than you you have insulted my mother and my father prepared to die, Princess Bride style. 
so that's there. Um, yeah. That's our, that's our third ward. Yes, okay. Now we move on to Arakel's ward. Now these two being side by side, that's... Yeah, that's intentional. They kind of keep each other in check. Now Arakel, he's kind of the other side of the coin from Artur. He is there. I say he. He, she, there. It. Arakel is the god of order and justice. So you have crime and chaos, order and justice, sitting right next to each other. Nice little dichotomy there. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Arakel's ward. The streets here are full of those who pursue and uphold the law. And along with those who have tried to thwart it and must now try to avoid justice within the courts. So if you're in Arakel's ward, uh, if you don't live there or work, if you don't live there, uh, odds are you're either a lawyer or a solicitor, whatever terminology you want to use, some sort of legal representative, or you're a judge, or you're on trial for something that you've done. Because this is where you're going to find the courts. Uh, the various levels of them, all the way from the like the small civil courts to the high courts. Uh, even the military courts are within Arakel's ward. And of course, because this is a ward of a god, uh, there are a number of statues and temples, even in Arthur's ward. The statues and temples dotted around the place. And a number of these temples bear a likeness for Arakel. And one of the more common portrayals of Arakel is just a simple bust. So a simple just head and shoulders. Um, but the head, uh, the head, there's a full face helm. And the helm is, the helm is like a full face helm, so it completely covers, the, so there's no vision, so it's the whole justice is blind thing. But this is a full face helm. Uh, there's a, there's a rumour that goes around with these, these statues, there's a rumour that there's a number of these statues are faced towards Badadun's stand, and they hide, the statue has a smile on it, it was like a sort of a smug little smirk, which is a jibe that the great and powerful Badadun has to seek justice for his followers, at the hands of another god. It's a small little little jab. Uh, and next to the Arkel's ward, we have the prison ward. I wonder what's going to be here. <laughs> yeah, this is where you're going to find the, the jailhouses, the dungeons, that sort of thing. From every, everybody who's like had a bit too much to drink and has made an ass of themselves and is sobering up at a drunk time before they get sent home to... Oh, the murderers, the serial killers, the real nasty pieces of work that really ought to just be forgotten about. This is where they end up. And even where like, court-martial soldiers will end up being held. So they're not held within the barracks. They're held in a... Uh, they're put in cells here before they're being tried or after they've been tried. That's where you're going to find it. Yeah, in the prison ward. It's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. Uh, the map kind of gets a bit fuzzy here. Uh, because you have Faldir's ward and Toromir's ward. Now it looks like there's a wall here. You can see the Manchurian docks. That's actually subterranean. So Faldir's ward and Toromir's ward kind of merge into one. Uh, there's a market kind of sits between the two of these. So they're not walled off from each other. It's the one spot where there is no walls. There's just a market kind of sits here above what are the Manchurian docks. So Faldir's ward... Um, this is where you're going to find the the blacksmiths, the sage works, the stonemasons, anybody who builds anything or makes anything, uh, some sort of craft. This is where you're going to find them. Like stonemasons, as I said. This is where you're going to find them. This, this is where like the military will go for, hey, we need uh, we need like a dozen catapults that our onagers built. Because they'll go here and ask. Um, or, hey, we need to rearm, we need to rearm an entire legion. We need 5,000 swords. There you go. This is where they'll go and make them. That's just an example. There's other bits and pieces that are built. So if there's a construction project going on anywhere in the city, it's odds are the, the people who build it are going to come from here or the apprentices or the apprentices come from here. And then you have over here kind of facing them, you have Tormir's ward. Uh, this is kind of where like the, the farmers, the farmers... Anybody who's anybody who revels in or deals with nature, like you raise grow crops, you raise livestock, that kind of thing. This is where they would live or make a living. 
So if you're a herbalist, you sell anything to do with that. Um, the, basically the least amount of processing required to sell an item. So like herbs, you just pick the herbs and then dry them and then sell them. That's where you would find like a herbalist would be in like the Torex Atormir's ward. It's also quite... Everywhere else that we've been already is quite... Like a lot of steel, a lot of wood, stone. It's a city. There's, you know, it's fairly well settled, fairly well developed. Even Faldir's ward is quite like that. Tormir's ward is wild. Yes, there you have the outer and inner walls. And then you have the market between Faldir's ward and Tormir's ward. Uh, this is the great markets. There's markets dotted around the place, but this is the big one. Tormir's ward is like the least tamed. Nature has been allowed to run rampant here. So a bit like walking from... It's a, imagine, if you will, uh, I Am Legend in New York City from I Am Legend. Before, when everything's fine, before the film. It's like, oh, that's New York City. And then Tormir's Ward is kind of like New York City when I Am Legend is kicked in. That's the kind of vibe that it has. Uh, next to that... So slightly, and also slightly outside the walls, you have this thing called the Great Sprawl, which kind of ties into number 11 over here, which is the Slum Ward. It's fairly self-explanatory, call it the Slum Ward. Uh, but the difference between the Sprawl and the Slum Ward is the Slum Ward is, this is where if you live here, you're not very well off, but you're able to live within the walls of the city. You're able to pay taxes and tithes and pay your rent or own a house whatever it is you end up doing you make enough money to live but it's not an awful lot so this is where the poorest people in uh Terran are going to live um and those who can't afford to live within the city walls live just outside it here in the great sprawl which is effectively a shanty town that just kind of naturally forms and springs has sprung up around the place it's located over here sort of sp Splits between the Slum Ward and Katsia's Ward. Uh, sort of more towards this end of it. Uh, sort of more between these. The, the Great Sprawl kind of sits sort of between the two. And the further you, around you go, the Sprawl kind of disintegrates. Or, sorry, breaks up. Because uh, Katsia Ward, Katsia, she, or there rather, is the god of peace and charity. So, Katsia's Ward, this is where you're going to find, uh, like, the hospitals, the houses of healing, uh, and that sort of a thing. So, that's the healers. And then charity, this is where a lot of, like, there's a lot of, like, funnily enough, a lot of charity, a lot of charitable work goes on to try and, uh, like, help the poor people, help the poor, the less fortunate, the sick, the infirm, the veterans who are unable to work. This is where you're going to find the charities. That's also where you're going to find embassies. Because Katsia is also a patron of diplomats. So you're going to find embassies here for for the dynasty and for the republic. You're going to find the dynasties are going to be in here. And this is where you got a lot of foreign merchants will kind of come and tend to stay here. Because it's... A lot of this place is kind of themed... You have obviously the Menturian aspect, but also when you have the embassies, wherever they are within the ward, around the embassies, there are going to be businesses and things. There's going to be a bit more thing for like the Republic, Van Moreno, or the Salazan Dynasty. So things are kind of a bit more, less Menturian in this ward. They're more about melting pot. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then we have these two, number 13 and number 14, is the Auxiliary Ward. The Echoing Ward. Uh, these are the other branches of the military that are outside of the legions. Now, the, the, the legions is kind of a catch-all term for the Menturian army, if you will. But it is split into, quite distinctly split into the legions, who are the actual heavy infantry proper. No, we are the soldiers. Uh, the tried and true heavy legion heavy infantry legions um but that's you know it's not all it's like it's like using a sledgehammer to crack a walnut in some cases sometimes sending a legion or heavier infantry doesn't really work this is where you need more specialized troops and this is where the auxiliaries come in 
they're sort of filling the gaps that the legions can't plug. So yeah, this this is where you would have all oh, the riflemen, for example, the more modern riflemen, or the archers, or any specialized role that a military would need. This is where they're going to find you find them. And next to that, you have the equine ward, which is where you're going to find, funnily enough, the horses. This is where you're going to find the cavalry are based, or this is where citizens, uh, civilians can come and buy horses, stable their horses, or rent horses, if you will. This is where you're going to find that. And the last one is down here, where you have the Manchurian docks and the port. I haven't labelled the port in this map, but this domed area is the docks. Um, there's two parts of it. You have the docks outer and the Manchurian docks, which is the military, the naval docks. Now, the outer docks are built along the edge of the Faldir's Ward and Toromir's Ward, as you can see there. The docks exist there, and there's a gap in the middle. Uh, and the gap is so the navy can get in and out of their own private, secure dock, which is subterranean, actually built into the cliffs. The whole thing is built in, in, in and under the cliffs to keep the navy, the ships, protected from the weather, environment, and also stop the enemy from going, from spying on them or attacking them. So you have the outer docks along here, along this domed area, and then the naval docks are there. And I believe that's everything. That is Terran broken down. Yeah, that's a, this is a long this is a, this is a long video. So if you're if you actually stick with this whole thing and watch it all, uh, thank you very much for sticking with me. Um, and no, my future videos on the cities and towns will not be this long. Uh, just because Terran is, I put so much into Terran right out the gate. But yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, thanks for taking with me, adventures. Um, until next time, see ya.